In today's video, we will learn about fluids in motion and Bernoulli's equation. When studying fluids in motion, we assume the fluids are ideal fluids. An ideal fluid is non-viscous with no internal friction between adjacent layers. The fluid is incompressible and its density remains constant. The fluid's motion is steady while its velocity, density, and pressure at each point in the fluid doesn't change with time. The fluid moves without turbulence and each element of the fluid has zero angular velocity about its center. So if we look at the equation of continuity, the equation of continuity states that the volume flow rate through the cross-sectional area at one point in a pipe must equal the rate through the cross-sectional area at a different point in that pipe. So the product of the cross-sectional area of the pipe and the fluid speed at that cross-section is constant. Bernoulli stated that as a fluid moves through a pipe of varying cross-section and elevation, the pressure change along the pipe can be described in Bernoulli's equation, which is seen below. Through Bernoulli's equation, we're able to see that an ideal fluid energy is conserved along its path. And if we look to our figure to the right, we can see the effect of the flow velocity when we have changing cross-sectional areas. We see that as a cross-sectional area gets smaller, our flow velocity increases the fluid speed while decreasing the internal pressure. If you look at our first example, it states that water is flowing through a, a 3 millimeter diameter pipe at a speed of 5 meters per second. The pipe has a constriction of 1.5 millimeter diameter, and we're asked to find what is the velocity of the water through the constriction. So we start by summarizing the information that we're given. We know that the diameter at the opening of the pipe is 3 millimeters and has a flow velocity equal to 5 meters per second. And that the diameter of the constriction is given to us to be 1.5 millimeters. And we're asked to find the velocity of the water through that that point of time. So using the equation of continuity, we see that a cross-sectional area at the beginning of the pipe multiplied by its flow speed will give us the cross-sectional area of the constriction and its fluid speed at that moment in time. So since we're trying to find the velocity through the constriction, we can rearrange our equation, which will give us an equation that is equal to cross-sectional area of 1 times its flow velocity divided by the cross-sectional area of the constriction. So we see that our pipe is circular, so the area of the pipe can be found by taking pi times its radius squared. And since we're given diameters, we can take pi times one half the diameter squared times our flow th speed at the beginning of the pipe divided by the cross-sectional area of the constriction which we can calculate as pi times its diameter divided by 2 squared will give us the speed of the fluid. So you see that our pi's will cancel out as well as our two, and we'll be left with our final equation. We'll state that the diameter of one squared times the velocity of the fluid divided by the diameter of the constriction squared will give us our flow velocity. So if we plug in the values we're given and we convert our diameter from millimeters to meters, you see that our diameter at the beginning of the pipe is 0 0.03 meters 
squared times the flow speed of the fluid being 5.0 meters per second divided by divided by the diameter of the constriction which is 0 0.0015 meters squared and if we multiply and divide this through we see that our flow speed at the constriction for the fluid will be equal to 20 meters per second. Our second example states in the diagram above let the difference in pressure be 5.0 times 10 to the fourth pascals while taking change in displacement in the y direction to be equal to 2 meters and let the velocity of the fluid at the second cross section area to be equal to 4.0 meters per second and we're asked to find the speed of the fluid flowing through the pipe at its opening. So since we have a change in elevation we'll use Bernoulli's equation to solve this example. In Bernoulli's equation we have the pressure at opening of the pipe plus one half the density of the fluid times its initial velocity squared plus the density of the fluid times gravity times the height at the opening of the pipe is equal to the pressure at the end of the pipe plus one half the density of the fluid multiplied by the fluid speed at the end of the pipe squared plus the density of the fluid times gravity times the displacement in the y direction at the end of the pipe. So we're trying to solve for our initial velocity at the beginning of the pipe. So if we subtract our initial pressure and subtract our density times gravity and our displacement get the equation of one half our density of the fluid times the velocity of the fluid is equal to P2 minus P1 plus one half the density of the fluid times its velocity at the end of the pipe plus the density of fluid times gravity times our change and our y displacement. And if we rearrange the equation to solve for our initial velocity, we'll get a final equation that will be the square root of two times our change in pressure divided by density minus two times gravity times y plus our final velocity of the fluid squared. And now we can plug in our values into our equation. And when we do so, we see we'll have two times 5.0 times 10 to the fourth pascals minus two times gravity times our change in our y displacement of two meters plus our velocity at the end of the pipe squared divided by the density of water which is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed and when we take the square root we see that our initial velocity at the beginning of the pipe is equal to 8.8 .8 meters per second.